Got some more Tops 2020. Uh, I think I think most of these are, um, some of these might be redundant. I, I made a video uh, about a month or so ago with the first batch that I received, and then I got a whole bunch in since, obviously. And I wasn't sure if I showed some of these already, like this Ripken from uh, Ermsey. And uh, this is the uh, Natural, Natural, Mattingly. I think I might have showed this. This is a trout from Veeds. And then I'm not sure if I showed this one, this Mattingly from Fuji. But the rest of these should all should be all new. I like this Jeter here. I've got a few of a uh, few of F dots. I got a few of everybody, I think, at this point. Um, Fuji, uh, Griffey. So this guy kind of grew on me. Initially, I wasn't a big fan, especially. I'm not sure what his first card was. Was it the Ripken? But that was way early, and I wasn't really into the set then. Um, it was around the time where, and I might have mentioned it last time, I was going to wait till the cards came out and then just go back and pick the ones that I wanted or liked. And then, of course, um, they took off uh, secondary market value-wise and went through the roof. So uh, things are coming back down, though. Here's a nice Gibson, Jacob Rochester. Now, we're getting to the point where some of these early print runs – you know, like I'll see, like, for example, a Sophia Chang Rivera, which was card number seven or eight or something like that, with a print run of around 1500 selling for over $200, around $200. It's come down quite a bit. And some of these newer releases are approaching similar print runs. And so what's going to happen here? And I mentioned, it, I think, in the last video, something's got to give, right? Are these early cards finally going to just come back down to reality? Or uh, will these newer releases people rush back to try to get those because they have a, a low print run, which I don't think is very low. Um, I don't know. I think it's more likely than not that those early prices, if, if you're holding on to them, I'd say sell them. <clears throat> and of course, saying that, it's like I'd always be worried about the return policy. And I also may have mentioned this. I think eBay allows like a six-month return. I like this Jackie. This is also Old Man Allen. Old Man Allen. Um, so it's like you could buy a card... And I've seen it happen where it's X amount of dollars you pay for it. And then by the time you get it or maybe a month or so later, it's dropped in value, let's say, by half. Well, the buyer can say, hey, uh, I'm changing my mind. It's got a scratch or something's wrong. You return it and then get your money back. And that's just like, eh. Uh, I'm really liking Sophia Chang's work lately. I just picked up the Ripken, maybe because she colors the outer border. Um, this is Rochester Ichiro. Did I show this one last time? Yeah, again, I'm not sure. Um, Mr. Cartoon, Derek Jeter. A lot of these probably can be picked up for like ten, fifteen dollars. I don't know. Uh, I see some of the, uh, and I think it's going to be with a lot of the cards that fouled that Griffey Shore, and then for a period of time where a lot of people were buying these, uh, myself included. You know, buying. I was only buying one of each. Um, some people probably buying some to flip, thinking they're going to, you know, make money, invest, and. Uh, well, it's not working out. So uh, maybe that's why uh, these newer print runs are getting really low. This is a sweet-looking card, by the way. Um, these uh, flippers and investors are, are exiting the market. Another nice one, Clemente. Some of the ones that deviate from the actual card design I like quite a bit. And uh, I think just about all of Rochester's cards are like that so far. Maybe the Griffey is the closest to the original Griffey, 89. But uh, here's another Chang. So again, you know, I paid I think what nineteen dollars for this card, and you could probably pick it up for like maybe ten dollars on eBay now. Uh, Keith Shore, this guy also grew on me. I mean, I thought his cards were ridiculous. When I saw that Mattingly way back when, what, April, I don't know when it was launched, but uh, I was like, no way. Uh, but then lately, I've been picking up a few of his. This good, and I picked up because the sign of the times. He's wearing the mask. All gotta wear masks. I just got a memo that. Um, Someone at my kid's daycare has got COVID, but uh, the rooms are uh, individual, and so his room wasn't affected, supposedly. But, uh, like, oh, that's just great. Here's a nice-looking Gwen. But I don't know if I mentioned I, I, I think I had I think I had coronavirus back in February. I even joked about it, called it the Kung Flu. I had gone to Chicago. I mean, I was on a plane. We're talking late February. This is, like, when it was just blowing up. and But before it was sensationalized on the news, Um I had all kinds. I was I had like a, what I thought was a sinus infection. I was like, "Geez, I'm still sick." You know, sniffling, whatever, sneezing. I went traveling, made sales calls, <laughs> probably spreading it around. You know, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Um, 
this is a nice looking Griffey. And then uh, at one point, I remember waking up, I had like these odd, like throbbing muscle pains in my back. And uh, then I couldn't smell the vinegar. I have a CPAP machine. And I couldn't smell the vinegar. I, like, as I asked my wife, do you smell the vinegar? I put vinegar in this thing because I have to clean it and use vinegar and water. And I couldn't smell the vinegar for like maybe half a day. Uh, and then that was it. Uh, here's the Keith Shore uh, Ichiro. But at the time all this was going on, all those symptoms weren't really being talked about. It wasn't until like I think middle of March where they start coming to light. And I'm like, oh, geez, and I think I might have had this thing. Um, oh, did I show this one? Yeah, I might have showed this one. I apologize. I think I do because I talked about how I got two of these. And then, um, yeah, anyway, Blake Jameson, Doc Gooden. I don't know. It's kind of scary. I'm looking at this uh, this pile of car. I, I, I see, uh, you know, I got a couple of rows in that. I'm already uh, out of room in this case. This is a nice Ricky. I like this one. Another F dot. Again, deviating from the conventional car design and putting their own spin on things. This trout. Trout's are always a high print run. Uh, I guess in, in today's high print runs, we're looking at, you know, I think they're pushing like 10,000 or so. Seven to 10,000 would be a high print run these days with these cards. This is goofy. I like this. Because I also like Bryce Harper. And that's who's on this card cutting his hair. So just have a, a, a mix of uh, different artists and styles. I don't know why I got this one. For some reason, this one reminds me of Will Ferrell. Maybe it's that horse in the background. <laughs> I don't know what that even means. But... Um, this is the type of card that you could probably pick up for five bucks plus shipping now on eBay. I haven't checked. I'm just, you know. Um, this one, this looks like it's a magazine. Again, just sort of a quirky take and um, pretty polarizing, this guy. Um, some don't really even consider him to be an artist, but um, he's part of this group here, Aveed's Brett. Another guy who's somewhat polarizing because all he does is take a Sharpie and mark up the cards, I guess, is his style. This is, uh, I like this one. In fact, Top sent me, I ordered a two pack of this and it was the Griffey, uh, was it Jameson? Some, some Griffey came with this one. And um, they sent me two, a double order. So I emailed Tops. This is JK5, by the way. And um, I said, hey, I got a double order here. It's not mine. Maybe somebody is supposed to get this. What do you want me to do? And they haven't responded. So I have two I'm still sitting on. Um, I didn't open them. I just left them in the bubble wrap. Ichiro. This is a... Was this Taylor? Yeah. It's been so long. Nice uh, Saladin Jackie. Another duo featured here. This is Keith Shore with uh, Dot Good and Daryl Strawberry. I guess I became more of a fan of his work when he dropped the pirate hats. Um, Ricky Henderson. I just picked up the, uh, what's this week's Henderson? Fuji's Henderson. Really nice looking card. Here's a Kofax. It's also Saladin, I think, right? Yeah, of course. King Saladin. Uh, Chang. Did I mention I'm starting to like her work quite a bit? I think maybe because she, am I being redundant? You know, I'm one of my, uh, eight minutes into this video, I'm not even sure if I've even said this already, but I, <laughs> um, I like what she's doing with the, with the card borders. Um, this is really nice. This is, uh, Tony Gwynn. Was this, um, Mr. Uh, Don C. Yeah. Don C. And it looks kind of like a baseball bat sort of texture to it, but it's not. It just looks that way. The Tony Gwynn. Here's a Saladin. Um, no, this is a JK5. Uh, Jeter. You can tell, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the one. Yeah. This is a uh, Jameson. Right? Yeah. This one came with the JK5 Gooden. All right, here's a um, nice looking Jeter. That's a Tyson Beck. Roberto Clemente. I was debating on uh, this week's baller from uh, uh, Clemente's, ben, ba Clemente's ben, ben Baller's Clemente card this week. But, you know, he's got a pretty big following and tends to have the higher print runs. And so I feel like it's one of those cards where I can maybe get on the secondary market for less than an MSRP. Um, interesting looking Don Manningly, JK5. So when this is all done, my gosh, I wish they'd finish a set so I could stop buying these cards. Um, but there's like another 100 or so cards to go. Mr. Cartoon, I believe. Yeah. And uh, when all is said and done, I'll take a look back at what I have. And then consider maybe an artist run or a um, player run. This is a really nice looking Griffey. So 
There we go. There's the latest round of Tops Project 2020. And um, really fun cards to collect. I've been enjoying it. They look so much better once you get them in hand. And I wish I had started sooner um, to potentially avoid paying way of MSRP for some of those earlier cards that I like uh, later on. So I'm going to sit back and, and kind of let this set settle for probably quite a bit of time after it's come and gone. And then maybe start looking at some of those early ones. I mean, the Ben Baller Ichiro, you know, it's a 1300 print run. It's selling for over $1,000. And I think... Um, one of the cards I just picked up is like a, a 1900 print run. And, and I don't know. I don't see, you know, um, it just doesn't add up. Uh, I think those, again, those early cards are destined to uh, drop substantially. Uh, not back down to MSRP, but certainly a lot lower from where they are now. Um, anyway, that's my two cents on that whole whole situation. As always, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.